pacifist revolution. Interesting. I would love for such a thing to be possible. Maybe it would be better to avoid building the barricades. At least until it's clear that violence is inevitable. That's good. That's a good compromise, madame. Yeah, I mean, we showed that in the other route that peace could win. Oh, here we go. This is it, Falcon. This is the day we make a stand. Everything is coming together as we speak. Fontaine is gathering the protesters at the Palace de la Concorde. Perio is making preparations to build and arm the barricade near the Palais Royal. Just as a precaution, you understand. The only question that remains is, are you ready? I don't know, maybe. We have no evidence, you see, so I am not ready. <laughs> <laughs> are you ready? I don't, I don't know what to do. <laughs> Uh, uh, do we agree that we are ready? Oh, well, it's up to you. Are you ready? Uh, nope, we are not ready. Nope. To be perfectly honest, no, I'm not ready at all. You want me to prosecute the king and the prime minister? If and when you drag them from the palace, right? Well, I've had no time to prepare. I have no evidence on hand. This whole trial is going to become one big fiasco. You're too fixated on the formalities, Falcon. Remember, we will be dragging him out. It's, it's not really his option. This revolution will succeed and those in power will see justice. That's all that matters. But, madame, I, I have no evidence. <laughs> but, madam, trials require I, evidence. I don't... What am I going to do? <laughs> Come on, let's see how the protest is going. But, madam... <laughs> but, madam... <laughs> Falcon and Beaumont arrive at the Place de la Concorde. The air is thick with the chants, shouts, and cheers of hundreds of protesters. A line of mounted soldiers stand shoulder to shoulder outside the entrance of Tuileries. This is amazing. I had no idea the Second Republic had this many supporters. Yeah, I didn't realize until, like, she was talking to the people at the grocery store that just regular citizens were, like, with her. But of course! You didn't think that we were just a few animals huddling in a cave, did you? The desire for revolution runs deep in the city. Everything's in place at the Palace Royale, ma'am. Just say the word and we'll set up the biggest barricade you've ever seen. Then we can all storm the building and drag that cocky king out his chair. There's been a change of plan. We're still going to protest, but we're going to do it peacefully. No firing from behind barricades, no violence, no capturing a king or prime minister. Madam, are you feeling all right? Quite all right, thank you. Oh, okay. But what of your desire for a battle of France? You cannot achieve that without bloodshed. You would think a man of the cloth wouldn't talk like that. <laughs> You'd think a priest would be more pacifistic. <laughs> Yeah, usually they're like, oh, no, that, nah, that's a good idea, no violence. We can certainly try. Falcon convinced me. Falcon? Pacifism seems like the Christian approach, wouldn't you say, Friar? I hmm. see, so that's how it is. Excuse me, madam. <laughs> He's gonna go set up bombs. I think the friar disapproves of the new strategy. How strange. He probably thinks I've gone soft, and maybe I have. But I'm not deviating from this path, even if each and every rebel leaves my side. 
Don't worry, ma'am. You aren't alone. We're not here violence, my dear. As long as you strive for a better friends, we'll always stand with you. Ah. Ugh, the stupid bullet wound. The damn thing's opened up again. What's the news, brother? Is everything in place? We have a problem. The man of Zell refuses to use violence. She's turned timid. Turned timid? How? It appears that the lawyer Falcon is something of a lion tamer. JJ <laughs> Falcon? That bird has proven to be more trouble than the rooster, I swear. Brother, listen. If there is no violence, then there will be no power gap. One leader is just peacefully replace another. We need chaos for our plan to work. Guess we'll have to follow through with our own contingency strategy. I'll find the victim, you find the suspect. Don't punch yourself, brother. You're still injured. Look at those scum! Val vermin, the lot of them. Mark my word, Sparrowson. Every one of these petulant dissenters will take the first opportunity to turn aggressive. They lust for violence. They don't look too violent to me. Trust me, this is just how the crowd looked before the July Revolution. It only takes one crazed individual and the entire crowd will explode into a frenzy. Hey, it's you! Christ, it's individual. good to see you again. No time for pleasantries, Inspector. You needed urgently on the place de la Concorde. Me? Would I not squander the other officers on active guard duty? There's no time to explain. Any minute now. Da! Do you hear that gunshot? It's already begun! Come on, Inspector, we must make haste! Inspector, I really don't think you should be trusting this friar. He's a two-faced wolf. Friar Remus has provided me with reliable information in the past. I trust his judgment. But, Inspector... This isn't up for discussion, Sparrowson. I have a duty to uphold. Stay back. Stay put. I'll be back in no time at all. But... But... What should I do now? He's part of the rebellion. A gunshot? It was nearby, too. So the friar was right. Van's Rizzi is an inevitability. We haven't reached that stage yet, madame. I can't afford to take chances. Not now. Creo, march the crowd to the Palace Royale and construct the barricade. Yes, ma'am. Fontaine, Falcon, we're going to find the source of this disturbance. You came from here, Inspector. Hurry, hurry! Oh my god, is I'm moving as fast as these old legs will. Mon Dieu, a body. This woman must have been the largest target of the gunshot we just heard. I don't see a shooter. I think the gunshot came from over here. Inspector! Falcon! Well, well, I should have known that the Viridian Killer would have been a part in this. Inspector, I'm not... I'm not. What do we have here? A filthy cop and a dead girl. Madam, thank goodness you're here. I saw the whole thing. This poor innocent Madame Zoe was approaching the police line with her hands in the air. When all of a sudden, this brute of a police inspector yelled, Get back, you filthy rebel! He drew his gun and shot the bird point-blank through her heart. What is this nonsense? What are you prattling on about, Friar? Thank you for your input, Remus. I hardly surprise me that a member of the police would be the one who to cast the first stone. I, I think we're all being a little rash. Let's just take a breath, examine the situation, and... Wait a moment. You wear an eye patch. You only have one eye, Inspector. How, How observant! observant. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, were you the policeman who killed the rat at Les Hollies, too? Les Hollies? What are you talking about? Two incidents of a one-eyed policeman gunning down an innocent victim. There's no way that that is a coincidence. What we have here is a filthy, corrupt individual who takes pleasure in oppressing the common citizen. Am I right, Inspector? 
They really shouldn't be surprised that a stupid rebel makes stupid assumptions and comes to stupid conclusions. But open your damned eyes, mademoiselle. I'm not the assignant here. Don't call me mademoiselle, or stupid for that matter. Your guilt is plain to see. Given the circumstances, I ought to judge and execute you right here and now. Like you did with Coco Rico. Falcon, don't you stand there gawking. Vouch for me. <laughs> I just paused for a second. I was like, well, what have we here? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well. <laughs> Where, where, where? <laughs> the words Coke Rico, fuck you! <laughs> I mean, it's what really you? tempting to just let him die. But. It's the wolf that constructed the thing that got Coke Rico dead as well. So. Mm, I know this man. God damn it. God damn, I know this man. His name is Inspector Volerity. He is ruthlessly law-abiding, so much so that I can't envision him shooting a man without just cause. Oh, shut up, Falcon! I'm done with your idealism! Oh my god. I listened to you, I took your words to heart about avoiding violence, and now girl is dead, it's your fault! Well, I'm done taking chances. Remus, help me escort the invalid... To Pio's Barricade, I'll decide his fate there. With pleasure, madam. Come along, Inspector. Can we investigate the scene? Fontaine, Falcon, deal with the corpse. Let us meet us at the barricade when you're done. I thought it was like every waking moment that we were supposed to be together. There's, there's no way that this was the work of... The police. You know what, Falcon? I think you might be right. I'm a gun specialist. And I have a light gun shirt this far away from the police line. It doesn't make sense at all. Oh my god, Fontaine's smart. But that's rebellions for you. They're messy affairs. Sometimes innocents get caught up in the crossfire. And there's no reason for it. Well, there's no use, darling. Help me get the corpse off the streets. Not yet. I'm going to examine the body first. E examine the body? We agree that this wasn't the work of Inspector Valerity, right? And there might be some clues on the corpse that point towards what happened. An unpropped coroner's examination, I. Eh? Fine. You have two minutes. After that, we're heading to the barricade, whether you're done here or not. Yeah, okay. There's a handprint. What's this mark? It almost looks like a handprint made in blood. That's the... Isn't he missing that arm? Yeah. Probably the madness else. I don't think so. It's the handprint of a left hand on the girl's left shoulder. That's a good point. There's no way a person could comfortably reach that spot on their own back. I suppose so. What if the handprint doesn't belong to the girl? Then who does it belong to? The murderer, it has to be. The question on my mind is, why is this handprint made in blood? Did the murderer sully their hand on the girl's gunshot wound? Or were they injured prior to the shooting? Oh! Wolfman, that got the gunshot. There's so much to uncover here, and no time for a thorough investigation. It's a long shot, but maybe this girl is faking her injury. Just for the sake of thoroughness, I really ought to check for a pulse. Right. 
No, nothing. She's dead. Everyone's been so fixated on who did this that nobody stopped to ask who this girl was. I don't know, Monsieur. Give her clothes. Given her clothes, she's probably just another working girl. Just another? I didn't mean to sound glib, but it's true. This is one of my missiles among the thousands who live in Paris. Who was she? Where did she work? Will her family miss her? This is serious words for Goofy. <laughs> I don't know, but in the long run, I don't think anybody will care. I care. I can't afford not to. I don't know who this mademoiselle was, but I'm going to see to it that justice is brought about for her death. I guess the blood on her back. This is the bullet wound, right? What can you tell me about it, Fontaine? Well, it looks like the bullet took a fairly straight angle of entry through the mademoiselle's back. The shooter was the shooter was probably standing right behind her, the victim. What's the bullet size? You know its caliber? Let me guess. You're hoping that the caliber of its bullet is different from the caliber of the inspector's gun. That would be conven that would conveniently get that one eyed police officer off the hook, wouldn't it? But I'm afraid I can't help you. Couldn't possibly know a bullet's caliber without having a good look at the bullet itself. Too bad we don't have the extractor anymore. God damn it. And as you could plainly see, the bullet is three centimeters deep in the flesh. So, you need to see the bullet itself. Help me retrieve the bullet. Oh my god. Help me retrieve the bullet, Fontaine. R retrieve? You mean dig it out? I assume you have a little more experience in this area than I do. Well, you're not wrong there. Fine. This will only take a moment. Here you go. One use bullet. Looks like a standard lead rifle or pistol ball, but I'm afraid I cannot tell you which caliber. Why is that? It's beat up. The bullet fragmented upon impact, Monsieur. I gather all the pieces, but I cannot assess its diameter with any accuracy. He gathered all the pieces. He's an amazing surgeon. <laughs> Still, I would. Guess that it was 13 to 17 millimeters. Sorry that I can't be more specific. That's an enormous help. Thank you, Monsieur. Well. Anything else we can click? No? Huh? Maybe something at the scene of the crime. Guess we get out of this. Press to X. <laughs> I'm done here. Very cool. Let's move this body off the streets. Then we must hurry to the Palais Royal. Mm hmm. Rest in peace, Mademoiselle. I'll see to it that justice is done. Justice is done. <laughs> Everything's going as planned. The madam's probably fiending right now. She'll attack the palace royale, the prime minister will flee, and then... Excuse me, monsieur. What do you want? I'm busy. Don't you recognize me, monsieur? I know that my disguises are a little more complex than yours, but I assumed you'd recognize Prince Juan when you saw him. You're Prince Juan? Indeed, and you are Judge Romulus, the corrupt wolf know what you did. You tried to assassinate the king, you shot the croc monsieur, and just moments ago I saw you murder a maiden at the Pla Place de la Concorde. You truly are a vile individual, aren't you? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. As if you have any proof for any of that stuff. I'm out of here. Also, I know that you are one half of the Viridian Killer. 